Hey guys, it's Web618. It's the 20th of April 2019. We've just gone half past 10 BST in the morning. Um, all right, today's video, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to look at the long term count, look at how it's going to play out. And on top of that, we're going to break down the short term price action around this point because it's a very pivotal level. We're going to determine whether price comes down from here or whether we're going to continue uh, higher. They're the main th points that we're going to address in today's video. So if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, First of all, one thing I want to mention before we get started on Bitcoin, just very briefly, uh, I got a few messages, emails and um, messages on my previous YouTube videos saying that a few people got emails from someone pretending to be myself, um, probably some kind of scam, I'm not too sure, probably wanting people to join some kind of a, I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, just be very cautious of it and, um, and keep in mind that I don't send emails to anyone um unless it was an invite to a discord i have sent emails as a group um to course members to invite them to the discord um but apart from that i haven't sent any emails to anyone apart from replies to people who have asked me questions so yeah if you receive any dodgy emails um yeah just ignore them and if they do send you an email maybe just ask put a, in the reply maybe just ask what they're um forecast is on bitcoin and i think based on their response you'll quickly get a, a good gauge of whether it is me or not so it's a good way of just filtering out whether it's a scam or not anyway that's that so let's just get started on bitcoin so as per my last video i did change my wxy account so this was w x here y here so i justified that uh, with many reasons in my last video and it basically told us that this was a a major swing low. Now the, the big question was whether this was the bottom um, or not, or whether we're gonna come down lower. So they're the main questions that everyone's thinking about at present. Now the only real argument that this isn't the main major low is because of the lack, lack of volume. Now volume is hugely significant because there's only three major components looking at any chart there's uh, price time and volume so you can't really ignore volume and say oh it's just one indicator it doesn't matter it's, it's it tells us what the chart is doing so you can't cannot be ignored price can't be ignored time cannot be ignored and volume cannot be ignored and if your strategy doesn't include all three then you, you're stabbing yourself in the foot because you're Satan essentially trading blind um, <clears throat> so yeah you can't ignore the volume I did mention that potentially volume can be manipulated and certainly I'm sure it is um, but that said the relative volume on a day-to-day -day basis should still have a kind of spectrum whether it's manipulated or not even if it's only demonstrating retail trader volume that is still significant because what you have at major swing lows and swing highs is retail trader shakeouts so it doesn't matter whether it's institutional volume or not um, the high volume spikes generally suggest major swings because you're getting retail traders shaken out at that point it's usually accompanied by a lot of media attention to further help you know um, shake out the weak hands we haven't seen that major volume on bitcoin at this low here you know for this to be a major swing low we just haven't seen it and for me it, it really does bother me and it i I do feel that it would be very, very difficult to call, call this a major, you know, the low. I do feel that we're going to probably see lower lows. Um, yeah, that would certainly be my bias. I did put a tweet out not too long ago explaining why this was a major swing low and whether it could have been the bottom. So this is all the TA that I could justify for this being uh, the major swing low here. I made comparisons with the 2014 crash with the W, X, Y play out, the pitchfork, finding the lower warning line on both occasions. 
Um, the Fib there were Fibonacci projections of the for the W wave and the Y wave, which uh, was gone into detail in my last video. Um, so there's a lot of resemblance to 2014, and it probably explains why we found great support at this level, as well as the 200 week simple moving average also offering support. Um, so plenty of reasons why this was a major swing point. However, with a lack of volume, it's very hard to say this is the, the absolute low. And so because of that, my long term bias is to look at this price action now as a corrective count rather than an impulsive count. So at every opportunity that I see a potential correction completing in this bit of price action here, I'll be looking uh, to short. OK, so just going back to the chart. So, um, so that said, so you're aware of my long term bias now, as I say, I'm looking out for correction completions. And there's obviously a f several ways that this can play out. So it could be a W X Y X potentially finishing here and then Z comes down and forms new lows. OK. So it could be a W X Y X Z. Alternatively, the X second X wave may not have finished. It could potentially come up to 5,800. I would be happy for it to perhaps wick up to 5,800, then come back down to make lower lows. That's another option for the WXYXZ. As soon as this upper warning line breaks, for me, that WXYXZ is off the table. And then what we need to think about is, a, is that we could be playing a much larger WXY with this all being a three wave W, then we have a, a three waved X, and then we have three waved Y coming down even further. Okay, that's the other way I'd look at it. If we fail to, if 5400 fails to hold and 5800 fail to hold, and then we break our upper warning line, certainly we could have uh, an X wave coming up, it could come up, it could come up very high. It, it's variable. You're looking at fib retracements of the W wave, uh, probably around 50%, 61.8%, it can even be 78.6%. Uh, so uh, essentially, you'd just be looking for correction uh, patterns to have completed using uh, Elliott wave, using pitchforks, um, and then obviously also looking for horizontal resistance also. But as I say, I'm not entertaining that count just yet. Obviously, if 5400, 5800 fail to hold, then I would be considering those. At present, there's no reason for me to suspect that we don't come down straight away from here. For me, I going long at this point would be um, uh, completely the wrong thing to do, in my opinion. There's very little upside. As I say, we could push for 5,800 and then we're hitting major resistance. So I really don't see the point in going long at this point. Um, the only option here is really for a potential short with a relatively tight stop uh, above our last previous high. I'll be zooming in in a moment to explain that clearly. But I just want to show you the long term count. So this is obviously my secondary count should we push higher. So this is a major W, X, Y. Right now, I'm not looking at this count. I'm still of the opinion that we could see a WXYXZ. This is W, X, Y, X, and then Z is going to come down lower. Probably initially targeting the 3000 level just because of this excellent uh, flip of resistance turn support at 3000. Uh, after that, 2500, approximately 2500, is our next. Fibonacci, um, <clears throat> Fibonacci and order block support level. But uh, we don't need to go into that just yet because obviously we're focusing on price action right here. Now, okay, so that said, we can focus in on this price action here. I'm gonna show you how <clears throat> I've been looking at this as a corrective piece of price action. So let's go in on the four hourly. Let's tidy it up a little bit. Let's take off volume for a moment. So this, these, this red horizontal line in here and here, 
So this was our daily order block. So if we go on the, the daily, it's a lot more apparent. And it's acting as temporary support for price here. So you can see this was the top of the order block, bottom on the daily chart, and preceded this major breakout to the upside. So the bottom of it acted as excellent support here. And now the top of it has breached, which is significant in itself. But the question is, is it going to hold? Uh, and we're going to find out very shortly. Um, so now I've explained that, we can just take that off the chart for now. So just to explain, I've got two pitchforks on the chart here. One is explaining this downward price action. So from our W, X, and it's for the Y wave. That's what this downward pitchfork is for. It's for the Y wave. So this was the initial leg of the Y wave. Then we had a, a running flat to make our X wave of the Y wave. And then we had our final wave down. Um, so yeah, our first three pivots. So start of the start of the first wave, end of the first wave, end of the second wave. And then we get a pitchfork and we can see that the low warning line acted as, ex acted as excellent support. And now we're sitting at the upper median line and we've tested it twice, one uh, perhaps about a week or two ago and now we're currently testing it right to the point again, okay? So we're right at that level once more, okay? Now, since then, I've been looking at this corrective price action. And the way I've been looking at it, so, so far, it's looking like a WXY, with this being W up to here, X being a ascending triangle, that's A, B, C, D, E, and then Y wave is extended from here. And you can see we've come up to the 1.382. As I said, this could potentially push up to the 1.618. Uh, 56 and a, 5638 is the level there. However, you could potentially see a wick up above the 1.618, test 5800, and then come back down. And I'd still be happy to call this a corrective sequence. However, at this point, there's a lot of resistance and we're in the weekend, so there's not a huge amount of volatility at this point. So uh, I'm of the opinion that this 1.382 level could hold, this high could certainly hold. However, we're getting ever so close to breaking that high. So we're gonna find out over the next couple of days whether that's gonna hold or not. And yeah, so this is how I drew the pitchfork. And you can see we're finding this upper median line also acting as pretty nice resistance at the moment. Okay, um, so yeah, just to be clear about that ascending triangle, so it was an A, B, C, D, E. So that's the triangle, and it should have been on declining volume. So you can see from here, the start of the triangle, there's a general gradient down in volume all the way to the end of the triangle here. Then we see our breakout. So the volume profile fits in with this all being one big corrective sequence triangle. I can see converging price action, three wave patterns, flat top and higher lows. So I'm happy to call this an ascending triangle. And then we've got our impulse either side of it when I say impulse, obviously it's not a five-legged uh, price action, but it's a it's two corrective patterns, so that's why we call it a W, and this is a Y, but it's faster price action, and that they're, they're either side of this corrective triangle, and there's a good Fibonacci relationship between this leg and this leg, with it being a 1.382 extension at present. Okay, so. As you can see, we're at major resistance. We haven't really broken it yet. The downward sloping pitchfork that called out this low here is now acting as excellent resistance. We've got a Fibonacci relationship for a completion of a correction pattern. So for go going long at this point would be pretty crazy in my opinion. Yes, it could go up higher, but how long are you gonna be holding for? You're gonna be very nervous throughout the trade. We're gonna be hitting 5,800, which is significant resistance very soon if it does break higher. Uh, of course, if it does go higher, going on the hourly chart, 
what everyone is talking about at present. They're ignoring the long-term bias that I've just told you so far in my video. And they're, all they're looking at is this bit of price action and they're calling it a triangle. They're saying this is A, B, C, D, probably E is gonna come down and then it's gonna break out to the upside. So if, yeah, if someone presented this to me alone in isolation, and they didn't show me any other part of the Bitcoin chart, I would also probably label it like this. However, we're not relying on, when was this, 3rd of April, so this is what, two and a half weeks of price action. We've got about 10 years of price action in Bitcoin. Why would you just focus on the last two weeks? You know, you've got to use long-term bias to increase the probability of your trades being successful. Uh, just because there is a potential setup, it doesn't mean it's going to play out. The long-term bias is, the idea is to give you an edge over other traders who are using just these simple patterns. Um, so, as I say, we're just hitting resistance, resistance. What looks like an ascending tri triangle could turn out to be a double top, even a triple top. So, in order to distinguish what's most likely to play out, you've got to use your long-term bias. Uh, yeah, if it breaks out even higher above this high, your next target probably would be 5,800. So as a day trade, that's potentially what you can look at. So if you are day trading, then that's a potential trade for you. I'm not, I don't particularly day trade so much unless there's a major catalyst, but which we don't often see in crypto. So I usually reserve that for other markets such as Forex. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be entertaining this move to 5800 to be honest as i say i'm looking more for swings in bitcoin and at present i'm looking for a potential short and if it does puff uh, push above 50 uh, 5400 then i'll be <coughs> essentially um sitting out of the trade i'll be happy to watch waiting for another shorting opportunity that's the way i'll be looking at it uh and now zooming in further so we're on the hourly so I had been discussing how this was our initial move down and then we've corrected and I did give uh, one Elliott wave count which seems to have been um, invalidated. So now where have we retraced to? We've retraced 78.6%. Okay. And uh, if I were to label this now, it would probably be as a WXY, so this being three waves W, X down to here, and then first wave, second wave, third wave. So we can call Y up to there, and then the Fibonacci relationship. So again, we're at the 1.382. Could it, it could push potentially to the 1.618 at 5390. Yeah. But again, we're look, it's looking very, for me, it all looks very corrective. We're in the weekend um, now, so price action usually is corrective during the weekend and then price breaks in the other direction when we enter the, the, the week. Um, so yeah, this is the way I'm looking at it. So I hope I've explained in this video my long-term bias, which is the key thing here. And then I'll be giving updates on, you know, what uh, price action is doing in the shorter term. But obviously, the, the sh in the shorter term, these counts can break and get invalidated very, very quickly, very easily. Uh, it's the longer term bias that that is the most important and is less likely to get invalidated. So as I say, if this high gets taken out we, and, and it holds nicely above this descending upper median line of the pitchfork, then we could see price push on for 5,800. That's the way I'm looking at it. But at present, I'm still of the opinion that we could collapse from here. That's my um, preferred count and expectation. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see how it plays out. So I hope I've been clear in this video. Hope it's been of value to you. If, if so, then please leave a like and uh, any queries, just put it in the comments. 
as I say at the beginning of the video, look out for scammers. Uh, feel free to name and shame these people because they really are low life uh, scum, really. Um, so, yeah, feel free to share and um, make people aware of what to look out for. Um, yeah. So I think we'll wrap it up with that video. So I think it should be an interesting week. We're going to see whether this uh, upper median line holds or not. Really excited to see how it plays out. All right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up. Take care.